Welcome, my name is Harald Sack and this is Knowledge Graphs. Lecture number two, basic knowledge graph infrastructure. This is excursion number two, where we are going to talk about RDFA. And this is exactly how you can include RDF, as we've seen it already, into your web page. So that's of high interest. And we are again still here on the RDF or RDFA level here in the information inter-exchange level of the semantic web architecture. Okay, so the purpose of what we are going to do is we want to put somehow structured data on the web. Of course, there is not only RDFA to do that. In principle, there are four ways to embed structured data with explicit semantic annotations within HTML documents. First of all, you have domain-specific microformats. Already introduced almost 20 years ago, so that's the most, let's say, um, easiest or simplest way to include some structured data onto the web. We have generic RDFA that we will talk about soon here, and there is also HTML5 microdata, so like for example schema.org that you probably know, issued by Google, and there is also HTML page metadata via OpenGraph that comes from Facebook. By these methods, of course, you can introduce structured data and also give the meaning by, for example, referring to standardized um, metadata structures like schema.org or OpenGraph. However, RDFA is generic. You can use any arbitrary uh, schema that you are thinking of. So therefore, let's have a quick tour. We were first looking on microformats. Microformats emerged around 2005 and first they were used for XM, XHTML or HTML markup to express, of course, some kind of limited semantics within an HTML document. It was designed to solve rather simple problems there, for example, to include an address data in an address page or something like that. And of course, it was defined for humans first and machines second. So there was not machine understanding the main purpose when introducing that. So usually you put it in a web page to describe a specific type of information, which is, for example, the address of a person or, let's say, dates involved with an event or a product or a product review. And it could be easily extracted from HTML documents because the way how you integrated it, you were using specific attributes. So class attributes, for example, span and diff that you have in, in HTML. So you're using these HTML tags and of course then specific attributes to assign brief and descriptive names to entities and their properties and then you could extract it. Very easy example that you see here, HTML marked up with HCard microformat. So this HCard is a microformat standard, for example, especially for marking up uh, or, or putting address data within your web page. So what you see here, let me quickly switch on the uh, pointer here. So what you see here, we have the diff tag and the class attribute and we say, okay, we are talking here about vCard. vCard is a standard, it's an RFC standard referred to address data here that is used here. And uh, the first class we are using here is first name. So this content here, this possible data or possible character data that we have here, Spock, is the first name. Title comes next, which is science officer. Then we have an organization which is United Earth Staff Lead and then comes an address. An address, of course, there we have street address, postal code and locality. And for Spock, that would be Starfleet Headquarter at Federation Drive, as you see here, in San Francisco. And of course, then there would be a telephone number again, possible, and also a photograph that we could give there and share. So that's typical address data that you could then put into your web page. Of course, this would be bound to a specific standard to the HCARD microformat standard that we have here. Okay, so microformats can easily be transcoded to RDF. Of course, they can be mapped to RDF with a very simple uh, XSL style sheet transformation, so that is possible. However, if you want to introduce new microformat vocabularies, they first have to be consolidated by the entire community. So that's a rather lengthy process. And of course, if you use more than one of these uh, microformat vocabularies besides HCART, document processing gets more and more complicated and of course uh, complexity increases and it might also give then conflicts in the end with already existing HTML attributes. Simply for that reason, let's have a look at RDF and RDFA, how we can put arbitrary and generic RDF schema information and RDF entity information in 
HTML attributes that we then can use for further processing and processing then explicit semantics of that structured data that is included into the websites. So what's RDFA? RDFA is RDF in HTML attributes. There is what, where the A comes from. And it enables the inclusion of generic RDF annotation in HTML documents simply also by reusing existing HTML attributes like you have already seen for microformats. Meanwhile, we are talking about RDFA 1.1 and this is based on HTML5 and became a W3C recommendation already in 2015. We won't go into the entire RDFA 1.1 full standard. We only look at the light standard, so you only get a glimpse of it. If you are interested in it, then simply look into the reference documents that I have included at the end of this presentation. So what attributes are we going to reuse? So we have here new HTML. Uh, so a few will be reused, like for example, href when we are giving uh, a, a URI or also source when we are giving a URI. But on the other hand, we have new attributes like vocab, type of, property, resource and prefix. How are they used? So let's start with a simple problem. We want to create again an address page for Spock. And of course, we want to include RDFA annotation. What we first have to do is we have to include a vocabulary. <coughs> and in RDF or in the semantic web, if you want to, uh, let's say, describe address data and data about persons, there is a very well established vocabulary that is called FAFOF. So F O A F, FOF, it's called friend of a friend. And with that, of course, you have then, let's say, classes like name, first name, address, and all the stuff that's in there. So usual personal data stuff that you need. So we include here via vocab exactly with the URI of the fourth vocabulary, the fourth vocabulary, and then follows the rest of my traditional HTML page. So we have here a paragraph. And there is my name is Bok. And you can call me via, and then there is, of course, an imaginary phone number. Don't call that number, I have no idea who you will reach there. Okay, so that's for a starter, denoting the vocabulary, but nothing else. Next thing, we have to define the type of thing we are talking about in that paragraph. And here we want to talk about a person, a fourth person. So type of will be person, and of course this person then comes also or is available here in the fourth vocabulary that we are talking about. So we are talking about data that refers to a fourth person here. Okay, next thing. Now we can define all properties of the thing we are talking about. So, first property here in a span, also reuse here exactly that attribute uh, uh, or that uh, HTML vocabulary term. We are introducing here a property and say, okay, property name. And the name here is Bok. And we simply use here, so that's the property name. And that here then in the end will be the property value. So this is then simply passable character code that we take from the HTML already there. And then we introduce another property which is phone. And then here the string that follows next is the content or the value of exactly here then the phone number. So in the end this means from the fourth vocabulary we take the property name and assign the string Spock here as a name, as a literal. And here from the fourth vocabulary, we take uh, the property phone and assign here again a character string, which will be the phone number. And for the property IMG, which is of course image, we assign here the URI of a photograph that can be included. And here again, we are use, reusing an HTML attribute, which is here the source attribute. And it's like in HTML, you write source, equals to, and then in uh, double quotes, you have here the URI or IRI of your uh, resource that you want to include. So far, so good. Now we have for Spock the name, phone number, and the image. Of course, we can already then also create an identifier for the thing we are talking about. So here we're talking about, of course, a fourth person, but we call this person then also, this is a resource that we call Spock here. So it's resource hash Spock of type person. We call it hash Spock because 
that also needs a namespace. And of course, it's natural that we simply use the namespace here of which this HTML document refers to. So that's the base URI of the web page we are talking about. And then, of course, the entity we will describe here with the properties we have given is then here denoted by the base URI of the web page. And then the suffix will be hash Spock that we have introduced here. However, if one vocabulary is not sufficient to describe all the properties we want, of course, we can use additional vocabularies. And like we are used to do this in RDF, what we are doing here is we are creating new prefixes. So there is an attribute called prefix. And I say here simply in HTML, prefix equals, and then I give the URI of a new namespace prefix. And this would be open vocabulary. And I'm reusing this overall here in the end of my definition. So below my phone number, I also write here for Spock, not for me. My favorite beverage is Romulan Ale. And the property will be from open vocabulary. You might be surprised, but it's there. Preferred beverage, Romulan Ale. As easy as that. If we would now go to full RDFA, what can full RDFA do more than just RDFA light? What you can do there, for example, you can separate the content from the presentation, meaning that if you introduce here and let's say a property created, and then in your web page you have here the 28th of October 2212, this will be displayed in your web page. But you can here enter within this HTML tag, you can have here the, proper, uh, the, the attribute content. And you say content equals, and this is another date, or this is a, another formatted date. So we have again here 22, 12, and then October 28 as a string, correctly formatted according to, let's say, x date time and something like that. And this is then the content that will be assigned to exactly that property. But what we see in the web page is this one. So you can separate content from presentation. This is what you can do with RDFA full. Another thing, of course, what you can do, you can explicitly use then data types from XML schema definition. We already know that too. So and then what you do here is you use the attribute data type equals in double quote. And then you give the um, XML schema definition data type that you might use here, for example. OK, in general, to distinguish, we have two different things. So when we want to know what exactly attribute has to be chosen, in which case we have to di differentiate between resource as an object and literal as an object. And in case the object is a literal, so that's the blue case, um, you see here the, prop, uh, the attributes that I use for RDFA. The, in both cases, it's exactly the same. So no matter whether the object is a literal or resource, I can talk about the subject with the attribute resource or with the attribute about. Uh, for the property, I can use property in the case if I'm talking about a literal. If I'm talking about a resource, I can also use property, but I can also use the attribute rel for relation. And in the object case, of course, if we are talking about a literal, then we can either directly use here the, uh, the, the past character data that we have here in HTML, or we are using content if we want to separate presentation from the real content. And if it's a resource, then of course we have to give a URI. And for that, we are reusing here again the href identifier uh, or, or attribute that we have here in HTML, or we are using um, another keyword or another attribute that we have in RDFA, which is resource. But this is more or less exactly the same. Nice thing is you can, there are many tools on the web that you can use to try out exactly our example. And if you take the Spock example and go here to uh, the RDFA info page, and you can, you, you are here, you have here a demonstrator that I have tried out for you. So here is exactly the demonstrator. And what I did is I, I copied here exactly the definition we had here for Spock. And you see here, that's the presentation in the web page. You see here simply, my name is Spock, and you can call me via my specific number. And my favorite beverage is Romulan Ale. And here you see the graph that has been extracted exactly from that website. You can also see here the raw data. And then, <coughs> sorry, you see here exactly the RDF turtle file that has been created from that HTML file. 
but of course it's also nice here to see in the visualization that we have a web page and there we have Spock and Spock is a person, the name is Spock, the phone number and here we have the preferred beverage. Okay, now you might ask, that's quite nice, so is it really used on the web? Of course it is. So if we look at the usage of structured data on the web, we can see here, so you have here that graphics, so you can access the latest version of the graphics by simply following that link. This here is from the end of March uh, 2023 and to read this correctly, you have here uh, the percentages of web pages crawled from the common crawl and uh, you see here the number of web pages that are using specific technology. Microformats are using here the smallest number of web pages and if you look here uh, the in gray color you have the overall number of web pages and this goes then to uh, the top 1 million, top 100,000, top 10,000 and top 1,000 web pages. Yellow is then the top 1,000 web pages and you see of course the more popular the web pages are, the more they are also embedding structured data because that gives them advantages in let's say search engine ranking of course because more information is conveyed to the search engine and then of course your web page in the end ends up much higher in the result list. So microformat, almost nothing used anymore. Microdata with HTML5 of course is used much more frequently so almost 25% of all of the web pages have that. And then here you see generic RDFA so 38% of all of the web pages include something here which is really quite a lot. And then you see here JSON-LD with 44% and then you see here Open Graph with 63% in the web pages that have been here analyzed. So it's quite frequently used and of course you can find out more about it by simply following that link here and this concludes our uh, second week or third, third uh, second week of lectures with RDF and we will continue then next week with querying RDF graphs and knowledge graphs with Sparkle.